Hey there everyone, I'm Alex from Level Up Plus VFX, and for the last half decade I've worked as a professional compositor in the film and television industry. And welcome to the inaugural episode of Alex's Demystified Nuke Compositing Guide, a series where I'll teach you tons and tips and tricks in order to help you level up your compositing game and get your VFX career off the ground. From basic chroma and luma keys to more advanced techniques and workflows, we're going to explore it all. Before we begin, hit subscribe so you don't miss future episodes, and let's dive right into it. Today we're going to go over the UI of Nuke. For some of you, this might be a little redundant if you've already gone through the Nuke workspace, but I want to make sure everyone's on the same page, and we're not going to explore every nook and cranny of the UI, but today we're going to focus on the essentials, ensuring you're well equipped for future lessons. So let's start up Nuke and get right into it. As you open Nuke, you'll be greeted by a screen that's a gray color compared to my blue, but that's just a custom setting that I have put together. Everything else should look exactly the same. By default, Nuke should put you in the compositing workspace, but if it doesn't, go up to the top, click Workspaces, and select Compositing. You'll find the node graph at the bottom, the toolbar on the far left, the viewer on the top, and the properties panel on the right. Familiarize yourself with these regions because you'll be seeing them a lot. One additional thing about the viewport is that if you hover over it and press tab, you'll be brought into the 3D workspace. We'll cover this more in future lessons, but this thing is great for double checking the position of CG objects and verifying camera tracks in a 3D layout instead of just a 2D one like After Effects has. For now, just press tab again and go back to your 2D workspace. One of the reasons I personally like Nuke over other programs is that almost everything is laid out just right in front of you. You're not having to dig through comps and pre-comps to find the proper layer, and you don't have to switch from tab to tab to edit a single setting. For me, Nuke just feels a lot more convenient and natural, and I think this laid out nature actually makes the program really easy to learn in comparison to other programs. Now the first thing we're going to do is read in some footage. Hover over the node graph and press R on your keyboard. You can now navigate to your footage and open it. A read node should now appear with your footage loaded in. But even with your footage loaded in, you might notice that your viewport hasn't updated and is still blank. To fix that, simply select the read node and press 1 on your keyboard. Every number on your keyboard corresponds to a viewer, allowing you to toggle between multiple read nodes or compare your footage before and after compositing by pressing these different keys. All right, let's take a moment to talk about properties. Double-clicking any node will make its properties appear on the right in the properties panel. Something I like to do is set my max panel count to 1. This prevents multiple property panels from popping up as you're working, and it can get a little confusing when you have a bunch, so just having one makes it easier. Remember, one of the big benefits of Nuke is its simplicity, so keeping a clean and organized UI is important, though there will be times where you may want to switch back to two or even more in the future. For now though, just leave it at one, it'll make things a whole lot simpler. In our viewport, we can look at the red, green, blue, or alpha channel by pressing R, G, B, or A respectively while hovering over the viewer. This allows you to isolate each channel and can help you when you're doing things like color matching. Here, it looks like our footage didn't actually come in with an alpha channel. That can cause issues later on. You see, most programs interpret a black alpha channel as fully transparent, which may lead to unexpected issues in our comp. We can easily fix that though by double clicking on the read node, heading over to the properties panel, and checking auto alpha. Boom, your footage should now sport a pure white alpha channel, ensuring it's fully opaque. Crisis averted. Now, if we head back to our read node, it's time for a little tweak. If we double click the node, we'll notice it's currently set to the Cineon color space, but our footage was actually recorded in sRGB. To fix this, simply click on the drop down menu and switch the color space from Cineon to sRGB. While we're in the Properties panel for our footage, let's switch over to the Project Settings to make sure they match. Hover over the node graph and press S on your keyboard. The Project Settings should now pop up in place of your Properties panel, granting you access to the global settings where you can set things like the in and out points, the playback frame rate, and the format size. You need to set these values according to your footage, and for us, it's going to be 23.976 FPS, UHD 4K, and a frame range of 1001 to 1050. Here you can also set the proxy scale. Nuke allows you to enable a proxy mode similar to After Effects. To do so, just click on this button in your viewer and it will switch to a lower resolution version based on the proxy scale you set in your project settings. This can be great when doing comps with high resolution footage that might slow down once you start adding effects. In order to play back your footage, if you look at the bottom of the viewer, you should see the timeline. Below that, if you hit play, your footage should now play back properly. If it's out of your frame range, it might be frozen, so click on the frame slider range drop down and set it to global, and then hit the back button. 
If you need to rescale the timeline at any point, you can just scroll up and down while hovering over it. And to mark custom in and out points, go ahead and press I and O respectively on the keyboard or click the in and out buttons on the play bar. Now let's quickly talk about the toolbar. This is where you can search for and find any Nuke nodes in its respective tab. For example, keyers, grades, etc. But at Level Up Plus VFX, we prefer searching for things manually. Just hover in your node graph and press Tab to bring up a search. Just type in the name of the node that you want and press Enter to add it in. Certain nodes will also have hotkeys. You already know R for read, but there's also P for rotopaint, W for write, and M for merge. There are tons more of these hotkeys on the Foundry's reference guide. We'll have a link to that in the description. For now, let's just add in a merged node with M. Throughout this course, we'll be going over this node in greater detail, but for now, we're just going to focus on the absolute basics. By default, the merge node comes in with an over operation. For you After Effects artists, it's basically the After Effects layers of Nuke. Here, A goes over B guided by the alpha channel. You can hold Ctrl and left click in your viewer to sample a pixel of your viewport. When you do this, you'll see the RGBA values and other image information in the bottom right corner of your viewer node. This way, you can ensure color values stay within an acceptable range. It's important to keep an eye on this in the bright parts of your image because in most cases, you don't want your value going over 1, or in dark parts of your image, you never want it going below 0. Back to our merge node, we need to talk about some more math. Ugh, I know math. I haven't really had to deal with it since college. But hey, it's important here. More specifically, color math. In this example, we have two red constants. One with a red value of 1, and another with a value of 0.75. If we switch our merge node over to subtract, and plug the constant with a red value of 0.75 into B, and the value of 1 into A, we'll get a dark shade of red with a value of 0.25. 1 minus 0.75 is 0.25, easy. But just like you probably learned in high school, the order of operations matter. Switching them around and you'll end up with a black image with a red value of negative 0.25, which isn't what we're looking for. As long as you remember that merge nodes work in alphabetical order, you should be good. Here, it's A minus B, and in the over node, it's A over B. It sounds simple, but even I've made the mistake of plugging it in the wrong way and getting confused as to why my output wasn't what I expected it to be. Once you've finished your comp, let's talk about how you can export your footage. Hitting W on your keyboard will create a write node. Here you can set up all your render settings. Find a location to write your file to, and when you name your file, feel free to add its file type. Nuke will automatically detect the file type from your file name and bring up the file type settings. Here you can adjust file type specific settings like your codec settings, FPS, and more. Finally, you almost always want to set your color space to the same as your read node. If you don't, your exported file will have a color transform on it, and it will come out looking slightly different than it does in your viewport. Before we wrap up, let's talk about a couple additional tabs by your node graph. These come into play once you start adding keyframes to your nodes in the timeline. The curve editor behaves like any other curve graph in any other compositing or editing program. It allows you to manipulate and finesse animation curves. And the dope sheet, well, it's just like how keyframes work in After Effects. It allows you to click on and move keyframes along a timeline. If you're using Nuke Studio or Nuke Indie, you'll spot a sequence tab. This is meant for if you want to use Nuke to help edit multiple clips together. But while Nuke is an awesome compositor, it's not really designed for heavy duty editing. I know everyone's workflow is different, but if you're really looking to finesse your edits, we highly recommend using a dedicated editing software like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. Last but not least, let's go ahead and save our comp. Of course, you can save it like you would in any other software, but Nuke has a pretty cool trick. If you add a version number to the end of your file when you're saving for the first time, Nuke will recognize that you have set a version, and for every future version, you can click on File, Save Comp as New Version, and it will increase that number, creating a new version file. This is great for if you're sending things to and from a client and need to version up or version down, depending on their notes. But that's all there is to it. We've covered all of the basics of the Nuke interface. Now, I know that learning a new UI can be pretty intimidating, but the best way to learn truly is with practice and by using the program. But for now, you should be ready to just jump into our second lesson and actually do some compositing. I hope to see you there. I've been Alex with Level Up Plus VFX, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.